I am very excited today to show you uh, something that I've been trying to do with a bottle gun. It doesn't matter what gun uh, you use that is unregulated and um, make it work. Now, a lot I've heard and I've gotten a lot of feedback in one of my other videos where I was planning on drilling out an aluminum block or some kind of block, steel block, um, to integrate into uh, this space here and not have the bottle move so far back so that the gun is not balanced, doesn't look right. So today what I'm gonna do is, and this is the best thing I can come up with so far uh, without machining metal and taking chances because again, I don't understand the tolerances of certain metals and you know how much you should drill and how thin the walls should be. So I'm gonna play it safe. And what I'm gonna do today is show you how to install the Alteros regulator, which is it's extremely simple. Um, I have already done it on this gun. I took it apart. This gun has no air in it right now uh, because I'm for showing you how to do this. I'm just want to be quick about it. Uh, but it worked out great. I have it regulated to 150 bar. That's what the Alteros regulator is regulated to. Uh, here, let me show you here. Okay, and it's very simple to regulate. There is a meter at the top. The bottom of the green is 110, the middle of the green is 125, and when you're at the red, you're at 150. So I went to about just over 150, and again, I've already tested it. This gun is shooting uh, 33.49 25 caliber JSBs at 883 feet per second at 150 bar. Pretty consistent. It goes from about 860 to 875 and then it peaks but it's really really consistent uh, did I need to regulate this gun mm, not really I mean there was a pretty big spread um, why because I put on a fi carbon fiber bottle that allows you to fill to 3625 psi or 250 bar the problem with filling to 36 you know 250 bar is that because there's no regulator uh, your shot count remember it's very hard for the, the hammers hitting at a constant and it's hitting against a very hard valve that has a lot of pressure behind it and will not let a lot of air out so you're not getting those velocities you think you'd be getting. Uh, so now with the Alteros regulator installed, I'm going to be able to fill to 306, uh, 250 bar, 3625 PSI and get probably a few more shots. Very consistent. I've seen it already. The max spread was about 19, maybe 18, 19. It didn't quite get to 20. Uh, I think that the regulator has to settle in a bit, but it is awesome. And by the way, I'm going to show you how to install this regulator and make it look good. That's why I have this piece of PVC pipe here. This is a two inch. Uh, you can pick this up anywhere. It is Charlotte pipe, two inch PVC type one, Home Depot, Lowe's, anywhere you go. It has almost the exact outer circumference as the carbon fiber bottle. So. When I move the coat, when I install the regulator and move the bottle, remember this space is going to move the bottle forward. So that bottle is going to be out. The end is here. It's going to be about here. All right. So we're going to have this ugly gap in here and we're going to fill it in and we're going to make it look nice. Stay with me and I'll show you how it all goes. The Alteros regulator comes with this complete item. It fits right inside the bottle and then screws on. This is an M. 18 1.5 I believe that that is the bottle thread on my Talon Tunes bottle uh, it does come with with a manometer a fill a proprietary fill uh, probe or port there's two holes if you look here there are two holes on this regulator and they are meant to fit both the manometer which has a proprietary screw on it's not your typical manometer like NPT thread and a proprietary fill probe. These fit right in here. Very simple. So they fit right on to the regulator. Again, hand, everything is hand tightened. You're not going to, uh, you know, torque down. It's very simple. Um, all right, why don't I start by taking apart the gun. We'll put the regulator in place and then we'll build our little filler. I'll probably speed this up.
All right, so I have the air out of this bottle, but in order to get the air out, what I have done is I put it between a vise and squeeze it, and that lets the air out of the port. So this bottle is ready to be taken off. Again, this is, you're gonna have to put this in a vise, but be very gentle about, don't over squeeze the vise. You're just using it to hold it in place and then use a strap wrench to remove the bottle. Again, counterclockwise to remove. Uh, it might seem a little tight. I think they put a little bit of Loctite here. All right, let's start putting it together. So I have this regulator set to 150 bar, and that's indicated by the red inside. If you look down there, there's a screw, and inside that screw, is a, it's painted red. So just make it go to the red, and you're at the max 150. If you want it less, then you can start off at the green. Okay? All right. So very simply, I'm just going to start screwing it in by hand, hand tight. That's it. Same thing. Same thing with the nut, the fill fill probe, fill port, hand tight. That's it. Don't have to do any more. Now, let's insert. Make sure, by the way, make sure everything is clean. Uh, make sure you have no water in your bottle. I, I've already inspected mine. <laughs> uh, there's nothing in there. Uh, I always turn it upside down just in case. And then just start filling. Just start, gently, make sure your thread, don't cross thread. Everything by hand. That's it. Uh, do not use, by the way, they include a screw that fits here, I'll show you right here. It fits, let's say I take off the fill nipple, put this screw, it has the same thread as the fill, and you could put that pretty far in. And then if you want, use that for leverage and tighten down a little bit. Don't, don't over tighten, I mean, there's no need to. The pressure of the bottle is gonna hold it down. Um, you're not gonna get any leaks. Put back the fill nipple but hand tight good now we have the valve with the valve screw again m18 1.5 by 1.5 uh, i guess it's a metric type of thread so you have your valve with your bottle screw that in all by hand make sure the thread is you know you're not cross threading okay Again, just use the, never use the nipples or anything to make leverage. Um, use the solid block part of it to kind of make leverage. So I'm holding it by the strongest part and I'm grabbing the bottle, <clears throat> give it a twist <clears throat> in the palm of my hand. And that is pretty tight. And by the way, if you look, there's a problem. Whoops, here. So if you look, there's a problem. The problem is if I put it back together, the fill manometer, the fill probe manometer are going to hit the bottom of, let's make sure it's in there. It's gonna hit the bottom of the stock. So they've included some shims and I've already done this using the smaller shim. So I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna show you how easy to take it apart using again, the palm of your hand in the strongest part of the block, unscrew. So in order to get the bottle to position correctly in the stock, just use one of those shims, slide it down the thread, and re-thread. Make sure you don't cross thread. All by hand. Now, oh yeah, that's correct. Now when I put it back, the fill nipple and the manometer are going to be in the up position of the gun. Okay, so let's tighten that down. By the way, some silicone grease, I already have some applied on the O-rings when you're slipping it back into the block. And by the way, if you notice, this is all hand tightened. You do not have to... Do... Now, by the way, I'm doing this all 
unedited right in front of you. Make sure your, your valve is all the way into your block. Apply pressure. Screw down the grub screw. And again, most guns are exactly the same. They all have two grub screws or something to that effect holding down the valve. Again, be very careful. Good. Remember, don't over tighten. There's no need for it. Just tight enough. Okay. And there we go. This is, this is the Alteros regulator installed. Now, what's the issue? Well, watch when I put it back in the stock. So here it is. Here's the issue, at least for me. Put it back in the stock and look at this. I mean, we have a bottle. It's not the worst thing, uh, but now the, the gun is now, the center is in a different spot. The bottle has moved forward. It kind of looks ugly. So what we're gonna do now is use this PVC pipe to create a shield in here. We'll leave the manometer exposed and we'll leave the fill port exposed. All right, let's get to it. So I've cut five inches, just a little less than five inches of that tube. Okay, and that's gonna go right in here. All right, but we're gonna have to take some measurements and kind of roughly draw it. And then it's gonna be, uh, you know, a lot of trial and error. So the first measurement I'm gonna take is the distance across. So the first measurement is one and three sixteenths. So I'm just going to start writing these, you know, do a mock drawing and start figuring out. So it's one and three sixteenths. Now, how far from the wood to the block? Okay. And I'll measure it from this side. Uh, two inches. One and three quarter wide two inches long at the top. So what I'm gonna do is on my pipe here, I'm gonna start drawing it out. All right. So I now have the general shape of what it's gonna look like. So everything with the X, I'm going to cut away. And this part, I'm going to leave. So everything with the X, I'm gonna cut away. And this part, I'm gonna leave. So that's gonna be my first cut in all of this, okay? I've cut that five inch piece, I have it here in the vise. I know where I'm gonna be cutting. Again, that was from this longer piece, which I have spare in case I make a mistake. So I'm gonna Dremel out, wear your eye protection always. I'm gonna use a, a diamond bit. And by the way, you have to imagine that this is going to be sitting in that gun. And so you wanna make your cuts parallel. Okay, you don't wanna be uh, perpendicular to, to any tangent point. You wanna kinda of imagine it going in there. So I'm gonna go at a very slow, this is plastic, you don't wanna burn it. I'm gonna go very slow. And that is, so this is the first part, rough, roughed out. I'm gonna see if it fits in there. And remember, this is like wood, so you can sand it, file it, it's a little messy, um, but using sandpaper and hand tools, you'll be just fine. So here is 
the first piece, first step, first cut, and it fits in there. It's a little loose. I wish I had, you know, made it. A, I can maybe on my second one I'll make it a little thicker, but it's still a pretty good cut. But as you can see, if I try to push it, like this is how it's got to sit, okay? But it's too far, so we're going to remove the bottom to match the bottom here, okay? So that this will slide forward and fit inside nicely. But as far as I can tell, so far we're pretty good. All right, so now the next part is to draw out this slope to try to figure out where the slope begins. See that? So we're gonna try to do that. We're gonna do this by hand. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So this is what I've come up with. That, let me just put X's in there. So the part, all right, so the part with the X's is going to go. So this part here, I'm gonna get rid of. Let's do that now. Okay. And so now here is the second cut. Let's see, hopefully you can see that. So anyway, there it is. Here is the second cut. Not sure if you can see that. Okay, and that fits now quite snug. Not exactly right. Okay. And we're going to have to do a little more work. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I see what has to be done. So a little filing down here. A little bit on the outside. So now I'm going to remove... Again, this is a trial and error thing. So I'm going to remove... I'm going to, using a file or sandpaper, I'm going to sandpaper these outer edges. I'm going to kind of bevel them. And again, I can see that that's the shape here. It's kind of beveled. So we're going to try to match that. Okay, so I have, I don't know if you can see that, but this is now beveled on the inside. This is beveled on the outside. This is beveled on the bottom. Remember, this is the part. This is the bottom touching the stock. This is the outer bit. This is the top. This is where the bottle goes in. So you want to have this nice and beveled. And let's see how that fits. Here we have it. Beveled, beveled on the inside. So beveled on the inside to fit really nice on that bottle. And let's see where we are. We'll start screwing it in. All right. You know, we're just, we're just about there. There's still a little bit of a gap and this is tightened down. So, just a little more filing and we're there. Now you can't see this, but there's a little gap there, but you see how that's fitting in there? All 
All right, so I see a few more. I see a few more little fine adjustments that need to be done. All right, so just a few more, a uh, little more grinding. By the way, <laughs> probably a good idea to use a mask uh, along with the eye protection. That is starting to look really good. All right, let's screw it in. Let's see where we are. Nice. I think that's it. That is perfect. And I mean perfect. All right. Okay, so this is pretty much 80% of the way there. Obviously, we're going to create a little port for the manometer and another port for the fill probe. So I'm going to be opening up both holes, one a round hole for uh, the manometer. The manometer will be on the left side of the gun. The fill port will be on the right side of the gun. I think that's it. I have, this is the, so you can put your fingers in there for the foster, and this is for the gauge. I think it'll have to be opened up just a little bit more. All right, so I have routered out the fill port and the manometer port, and I just want to give it one more test, and I think I'm gonna have to open up the manometer port just a tad more. Hopefully, this will be the last of the tests. This is the last of the fitting, I hope. Mm. Okay. All right, Ida. Let's see, let's put it back in its spot. Whew, all right. So I see what needs to happen. Just open it up a little more here. Look at that. The fill port screws in by hand, no problem. 
See, I don't know if you can see that. And now you can grab the Foster fitting with your fingers. Let me bring this closer to you. So now you can, the fill port sticks out here on the right side and you can get your fingers in there. I think I'm gonna open it up just a tad more to make it easy to get your fingers in there. So here is a Foster. Let's see how easy, how easy it would be to get it on. And it's not that easy. So I'm going to open it up a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm just sanding the ports, trying to make them look like, you know, they came from a factory. That looks pretty good. You know what? This is looking pretty good. I think it's ready for paint. Here we have it. Completely done. Again, beveled on the inside to match the bottle. Like this. So that matches. Here, I'll show you right here. So it's beveled in here. And that matches the bottle. Now the holes match the holes as well. Uh, let's see, you could probably see that there's one hole and then there is, let's see, I don't know, there's the other hole if you can see. So if we're on the bottle and we wanna put the manometer in the circle, here we go, we could fill it by hand. I'm doing this by hand. Okay, it'll be, it'll obviously, you know, be like this in the gun and then you can hand tighten it Okay, and even if I wanted to, I could probably get a wrench. Oh yeah, I can get a wrench underneath there. But that's it, it just gets hand tightened. There is the manometer. Let's look at the fill port. Here is. Okay, so once one is in, here's the other. Here's the fill port, sorry. So there's the fill port and there's the manometer. Okay, let's tighten it down. Uh-oh, okay. There we go. Good. Let's put it in place. There it goes. Okay. First off is the fill port. Okay, and that is right there and easy to get to. Let me show you here. Here is the fill port, nice and easy to get to. Let's turn the gun around. Here is the manometer, there's the hole for the manometer. Let's see, I'll show you in that camera and that camera. You can see in both, just gonna stick it in. To make sure I don't cross thread it. All right, I'm gonna to have to take a little bit more from the bottom. Not, not quite 100%, but a little more from the bottom. Okay, not a bad thing. All right, so I'm using Krylon uh, all-in-one flat black spray. And we're gonna spray our little cap. All right, 
not too much all at once, a little bit at a time. Let it dry, you don't want it to drip. All right, we're gonna go for a second coat. Here is the finished product, the cover, that makes it look so nice. All right, here it is. All right, now, all right, so at this point, I am ready to put everything back together. Uh, we have painted, finished, finished it nicely. It's actually still drying a little bit, trying to do this all within the same day. All right, uh, so the valve is in place. And what we'll do is, we'll put the stock down. We'll put this down. Now it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Everything has to be put together at once. Putting a piece of styrofoam around this bottle, the bottleneck, in order to keep this all nice and snug so it doesn't kind of, you know, move around a bit. So let, let's, with that said, let's put it all back together. Back together. So I'm going to start by putting this little piece of foam on there. As you can see, the foam just goes, tucks right underneath, uh, fits nice and tight, nice and snug. Now we're going to take our bottle. Now we'll attach our bottle. Okay, almost snug, let's put it in place. Now what we're gonna do is snug it down. Okay, and hopefully everything will be in its right spot. And I can see that it is. I see the little styrofoam sticking out, let's push that in. We'll put the fill probe first. Let's make sure it's correct. Good. Again, this is hand tightened. And the good thing is you can access everything through here. Okay. On the other side, let's turn this around. On the other side, we have our Manometer gauge. This is our bottle fill. All right, so here, here it is with the manometer gauge. And on the other side, the fill probe. All right. So there's the fill probe. Anometer gauge. Okay, now we can put it in place. Good, it's a nice fit. Turn it upside down. Okay. Good. Tightened up. All right, looking good. There it is. There's the fill. Here is the manometer. Looks pretty nice. Now all I have to do is fill it up. And you know what? It changed the center point. The center point, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, so the center point has moved slightly forward, um, but it's okay. So one thing I wanted to let you know 
is how to set your pressure on your alteros regulator. Like you say, what, what pressure should I be at? Well, when you were shooting it unregulated with the hammer spring and the valve spring in place, and you say, well, what velocity did I want for what particular pellet, for any particular pellet? Uh, for me, it was in this gun, it was the 33.49 shooting about 875. And I found that to be about 150 bar. So that was my set pressure. And again, I filled up the gun unregulated to 200 bar. Uh, this could go more. This, this, remember, this is the carbon fiber bottle, not the stock bottle that came with this gun. Uh, and what happened was I, from 200 bar, I shot it down to 110 bar. And I looked at the velocities, uh, shooting pellets all the way through. Get about 50 shots, 60 shots. And um, I found that 150. So that's what I set it at. And that's how you'll set all yours. Right, so now we'll fill it. Okay, attach that. Let's fill it up here. I'll watch the, the gauge. Very gentle. So it looks like, uh, yep, about 3,100. Let's let you see that there. Okay. All right, so here is the finished product. Again, manometer on one side, fill port on the other. The Alteros regulator is installed at 155, 152 bar. And it looks good. The, the, just the, the center point has changed a little bit, but the gun is nice. Overall, still very manageable as far as weight, feels great. And uh, it's now regulated.